Welcome back once again to the WCS America Season 1 Finals. Right now, Alive leads 2-0 over Crank, and Crank has got to gotta come up with something here, Kev, as he's struggled to deal with Alive and his shenanigans in both these first two games. Uh, to some degree, yes, but at the end of the day, it could have come down to scouting as well. He didn't scout the factory in game number one, he didn't scout that proxy Rex in game number two, but he did see those Reapers, but he still decided it would have been a good idea to just run across the map. It is something that could have worked really well, though. Imagine if Alive wouldn't have made those points, Ben. Then there is like a Mothership core Stalker over there, which is completely uncontended, and he's going to be able to kill an insane amount of SCVs, but Alive uh, was prepared for that. He had a couple of Marines, not many, but just enough to deal yeah. with that aggression. And even after all of that, it's hard to say that one player was way ahead or way behind it was a pretty even game until the drops really kicked in but then the drops kicked in and alive just uh, took it to the next level we are on Akalon waste and we are looking at the red protoss player up in the top left hand corner of the screen it is axioms crank looking very ominous there with that uh, New York skyline behind him down in the bottom right is his opponent the blue Terran player representing team evil geniuses rate call it's alive And I gotta say, Alive makes some really funny faces if you watch him after a game. I just remember him playing in Pro League the first time and he was sweating so much. Do you remember that? Uh, no, and I didn't see that one. It was like uh, he was having a really, really intense battle with the conditions and his opponent. <laughs> and poor Alive also always plays like 45 minute games as well. So <laughs> it's not like it's a 12 minute game. <laughs> always goes on for a little while. Once more, we see Alive dropping the refinery early on. So I do think we're going to see a reap opening once more. And Ben, um, Eklund Waste is the map where Crank played earlier as well in this tournament against the Terran. That Terran was the STC. And that was actually uh, one of the finest games I've seen from Crank in this tournament. His high Templar position late in the game was just fantastic. His Zealots run by were amazing throughout the entire game. He never stopped. It was relentless with it and I just hope we're going to see him play a little more safe no stargate opening no uh, trying to be early, uh, very aggressive early on just try to go for a good old one gate fast expand try to get a robo out try to get a couple of observers out on the map and then just defend um, and I think if crank is able to stabilize into a mid-game situation where he gets up to two and then three bases he should be able to put up uh, a really good fight against the line and I think we can all agree that Akalon Waste is a map that plays well if you want to play that sort of a style, a sit back and, and, and wait and see style. Very easy to get uh, your natural, your third base, and really even your fourth base. So if you want to be that defender who sits, sits back and waits. <laughs> For a second I thought you were going to say if you want to be that guy. <laughs> Never say that to anyone in New York, by the way, guys. So they're not angry bounces. Oh, you really got to be that guy. <laughs> Kev was out the other night. Uh, we were uh, uh, enjoying some, some dinner and drinks. Uh, but of course, uh, most of the places that you eat after like 10 o'clock, uh, they have bouncers out front. So we, uh, we go inside, we're, we get our, 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 our beers and we have our, our meal. And Kev steps out to have a smoke. And uh, he, he come, turns around to come back inside. And he's like, hey, mate, I was just going to, I'm just going back inside. Bouncer's like, I don't know if I've seen you before. Kev's like, oh, come on. You really gonna be that guy? <laughs> That's the last thing I, I said to him. The he, was, <laughs> he did not like that. No. <laughs> he snapped. It was a stereotype New York uh, slash uh, old Italian bouncer. And he's like, "You're damn right. I'm gonna be that guy." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we have the Reaper hopping in. But more importantly, is this Zealot going to scout the factory, Ben? Yes, sir. Or yes. Okay, he does. He does catch a glimpse of it. So alive once more, kind of showing us that uh, game one build. But this time, Crank a little bit more hip to it. Should not take the same amount of damage as already dropped the Robo. Most importantly, as long as he keeps his units up the ramp, and then he's going to force the Widowmine to burrow very early on. And this is actually quite okay for Crank. He shouldn't take a whole lot of damage from this point on. Very good scouting early on. Crank just doing everything right. And I cannot imagine these Widowmines being uh, anywhere near as effective as on Neo Planet S. That Zealot had a terrible job. Yeah, it's kind of like an unfair fight. Tassad was just like, all right, chase that Reaper. He's like, okay. <laughs> that would have been me against New York Bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, uh, Alive just actually trying to borrow that mine right on top of the ramp, but uh, didn't really get it down in time. Of course, doesn't have the upgrade yet for these Widow Mines. So Crank so far playing an absolutely flawless game, taking uh, as close to zero damage as possible. Yes, he lost his Zealot, but uh, that Zealot uh, took one for the team. Much better opening for Crank than really he's had all, all series long. Yep. Uh, getting his Nexus down well in advance of Alive's command center. Uh, Widow Mines will continue to scurry up the natural ramp and try to be annoying, but I don't feel like it's going to be something that bothers Crank too much as his first observer already about 25% complete. Yeah, and there are no probes in the natural either, so Crank has absolutely nothing to worry about. He got a great scout off as well on the other side of the map, 
with his probe where you could see that the command center wasn't going down yet unless of course it was going down in the main which was sort of the case but that also means that it's going to take quite a while before uh, a life's expand will actually be up and running he picks up that widow mine so so far crank's playing a really good game ben and this is nice to see because now we actually have a, a fair start <laughs> seems like the first time we've had one of those games today Kev, oh. with us casting oh, man I actually think that this observer just barely, barely missed those marines and widow mines. So hopefully Crank knows oh about this because no. he doesn't really have a whole lot of units out on the map right now. With Photon Overcharge, he will be fine, but that one stalker looks very, very trapped. Reaper's gonna run up into the back of the main base once more, pulling, uh, pulling Crank out of position. Marines are now more or less uncontested in the back of the natural. And what is, how is Crank gonna deal with this? Yeah, this is a little bit annoying because I believe uh, he's gonna have to deal with that Reaper first, which is what he's paying attention to mostly. I mean, with Photon Overcharge, I think he's still will be more than fine, man. Like, Photon Overcharge is going to buy so much time for himself. Yes, he lost the pilot and he lost his Stalker over there. He did finally pick up that Reaper, so overall, still not all that bad. Actually, it went quite okay. For yeah, him. Uh, right. honestly, he just uh, he killed a few units and didn't really lose a whole lot. Lost the pilot and the Stalker, so it yeah. uh, worked out okay. It wasn't as big of a deal as maybe uh, I thought it was going to be. Good scout here with the Observer floating through a live space. Massive scout, actually. Scan goes down, but of course, uh, this was not the most economical opening from a life, so uh, these scans do actually slow him down for the rest of the game a little bit, so I don't think that Frank's going to be all that sad about losing the Observer to scan right now. Go down overcharge. The range is so silly. <laughs> it's just like... Back to where they are. Widowmine is actually going to try to sneak uh, perhaps into the main base. There is an observer there though, so Crank should be aware of this. He should see it. He could actually drop a force field to make his life a little easier. He's not oh, oh no! no that's, that's not a terrible. good thing to do! That's the worst force field possible! Uh, Mothership Core is frantically trying to get back and will get right. back in time, but... Uh, Fortunately, uh, that didn't go as bad <laughs> as uh, we thought it could go. Four stalkers, two sentries right now should be enough to deal with this little marine poke. Alive's being very aggressive, but I don't feel that this is a phase of the game where he... Uh, well, he should be aggressive anymore, Ben, because there's really not all that much he can do right now. He, he's trying to, to, to make the mo Oh, great force fields go down, but is there enough damage in this Protoss army? Observer's going to get killed, wow. Stalkers are going to fall, and oh dear! This is actually still a good trade for a life. He kills a sentry, he kills two Stalkers, perhaps even two sentries, and he killed an Observer <laughs> once gets more. Out right as the force fields expire. Great Man, have you ever seen uh, Marines without Stim and, <laughs> and Combat Shields being uh, this effective, Ben? I, I haven't. I, well, no, I have. I play Zerg. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Every single game. Right? Every single game. As uh, as alive as frantically oh. running back home. Frank, perhaps I'm pretending a little bit right now. He's gonna lose at least one zealot, and the second zealot is uh, running for his dear life. It's still 46 probes against 37 SCV, so this is not bad for Crank. But uh, needless to say, Crank has lost a couple of units too many in the last 90 seconds, more than he should have. Oh, yeah, the Widowmine blew up a stalker as well. That's why one of the stalkers died. 48 probes to 38 SCVs, uh, still a pretty even economical situation here. Uh, it's even good for a life, and uh, Crank has been playing this kind of safe, he's got a cannon in his natural mineral line, I believe. Uh, he doesn't have a cannon, a cannon yet in uh, natural, but he does have photon overcharge over there, so he should be sort of fine, it should be a little bit easier for him to deal with the drops than it was on Cloud Kingdom. Crank is once again going straight to Colossus Tech as his mid-game bruiser of choice, choosing not to go the High Templar route, as we've seen some Protoss players doing these days. No, I'm actually not sure if Crank uh, didn't have an Observer on the north side of the map in that airspace, so he's completely unaware of this drop. This drop will be able to be uh, at least annoying, but it shouldn't deal all that much damage. Actually, Photon Overcharge is being casted immediately, and so these units are just going to run outside of range of Photon Overcharge and pick off one more pilot. It's actually a little bit annoying for Crank. But really, the, the, everything Alive is doing is... Uh, is to pull the Protoss army one way so that he can attack somewhere else. And once again, managing to pull Crank up his ramp, forcing some force fields. He's going to lift up that army, seize the Colossus, so might not dart up, or then again, maybe he will. Oh, force fields could go down right now. Those are some good force fields. Don't move command into that uh, Crank. And he's going to pick off quite some bio units once uh, more over here. This is kind of okay because for a while, Alive's arm supply was way bigger. Ooh. But right now, it's 42 against 38. Crank is doing this pretty okay. Yeah, but alive, just persisting with the aggression. Uh, with the aggression, pretty impressive multitask here, uh, dancing around with medevacs on both sides of this Protoss army, looking for openings, not really finding them. 
as Crank is handling yeah. the aggression pretty well. And our life didn't have that many SCVs behind this band. Yes, he is going up to three command centers by now, but still, that took a little while. And what you also shouldn't forget is that he never got a reactor on that starboard. He just tried to get some medevacs out as soon as possible, which kind of forced him to deal some damage with it, because right now he's not going to have some uh, additional medevacs for quite a while, because he's going to have to drop the reactor and stuff. Oh, uh, big plays coming up. We're going to need some good force fields, and they do go down, and they are going to be good enough. That Colossus dancing back. We'll oh, uh, need a little bit of, perhaps I wanted to Zealous would have helped out a lot over here, oh, but he keeps brother. it alive. Well done by Crank. Very, very nicely done. Uh, at the same time, another attack up here into, into the base of the natural. A single Colossus will go down, but uh, I feel like the Zealous and Stalker is enough to repel that force, and they do indeed do just that. 94 supply for Crank against the 86 supply of Alive. But, Al but Crank is still on two bases, man. While well, Alive is so command center is pretty much up and running as it's transforming into an orbital right now. Crank's gonna try to go up to three bases, but this is 14 minutes in the game. This is actually pretty late. And above all, he has lost a couple of Colossus, which in my opinion is kind of hurting his potential to ever be aggressive. Because it's not necessarily the fact he lost a Colossus. That means that uh, normally when he would have four Colossus, uh -oh. he could move out, and right now he can. Constant aggression from Alive, and one more time, Colossus will go down, and uh, those Zealots don't have charge. Uh, force fields are pretty good, but a hot pickup, and those medevacs get out of there. Still, it's going to take a little while before there are high templates out on the map. One more Colossus in production, but so far, Alive has uh, been able to manage to snipe, I believe, three Colossus. And yeah, three, <laughs> maybe four. And uh, the Colossus count just never really climbing. That Nexus might fall. No cancel oh, no on that cancel at all. Either. So uh, just constant, constant, relentless attacking and dropping here from Alive, Al literally from the very beginning of the game. Alive is doing this very well, but I don't really understand why Crank didn't have observers in better positions early on. Yes, oh, he okay. lost an observer, but still. Not just one, man. Alive yeah. is constantly scanning and picking off observers. He, he's, he's continually done it. He's killed this observer out in front of the, the natural like three times now. Once more, we're going to see those two medevacs on the north side of the map. But uh, yeah, if you would have sent that one observer out a little bit more to the right, you actually have way more vision of the airspace. Uh, Crank's going to try to go up to three bases once more. He has the Templar Arcus right now, so that means he has high Templars. He can actually feedback the medevacs, and that's going to make his life a lot easier. Because, of course, feedback is one of the best ways to deal with drops. Yep, uh, and of course Storm is nearing completion, and that will ultimately give him a good strong answer to this bio army. Man, but this opening was quite unsuccessful for Alive, but once more, Alive is just putting himself in a really good position with all his drops. As you said, he's just relentless, keeps going, and he always finds an opening. And as he continues to expand, he's going to find it harder and harder to defend. Zealots do finally have charge, and that <laughs> will... <laughs> and those Colossus shooting up the ramp look <laughs> kind of funky. That will serve the purpose. Those Colossus are like eye level with the Marines, yeah. like zapping <laughs> lasers out of their eyeballs. <laughs> Get down here. <laughs> Uh, how scary would it be if you're like standing on a mountain and you just look to your right and you're like looking in the eyes? Oh, of the great feedbacks over here actually by this one high Templar. He kills one medevac and does a lot of damage to the other medevac. That's kind of the break that Crank needed. This is going to slow our life down for quite a bit as well and potentially he's going to say, hey, uh, you don't want to drop me all the time oh, anymore oh. because I am ready to deal with this. And then suddenly Crank is going to look way stronger than he did ever before in this game. Uh, Live still trying to find openings, stimming forward with these uh, Marines and Marauders. He knew that High Templar was there, but the both players being very mindful of the, uh, their opponent's positioning. Crank trying to save that Templar. I think he's going to. I mean, it's all or nothing right now for Crank, Bamf. Uh, Crank is down 0-2. We are, of course, playing best of five. The first two games were kind of over before they ever begun. Now we got a real game on our hands, and slowly but steady, Crank is stabilizing. He had a great start, but the life kind of pulled ahead mid-game. But if Crank can stabilize, if he can get good upgrades, if he can get oh. plenty of High Templars with Storm, well, this was very well done by her life. Sends a little hit squad to pick off one of those High Templars. Uh, eventually he should find himself in a pretty good position because Crank is very good in those extreme late game scenarios. Alive right now with about a 30 army supply lead. He's going to look to do something right here, right now. No Vikings ghost, though. floating forward, looking for a Colossus to pick off. Oh, good storm does go down. Uh, Hellbat doesn't absorb much of it, oh. but the Marauders sure do. There isn't too much anti-air over here, man. So these Colossus are kind of like sitting ducks. Guardian shield is activated. There barely is any anti-air. Most of the anti-air is actually from Storm right now. There are only three stalkers out on the map. Alive, I think, is unaware of this fourth Nexus. He could easily deny this if he just knew it was there, but uh, for now, it's going to go untouched. Alive with a nice upgrade event as well as 2 2 is about to finish up. Well, I believe Crank is. Uh, well, actually, Crank uh -oh. is on 2 2 and just starts 2 3, so it's completely even in upgrade. Some Zealot Harass coming to the bottom right hand corner of the map. A Warp Prism with three Zealots, and I'm sure a big Warp in behind it. This is exactly what Crank needs. He's got to start uh, doing a little bit of counter aggression of his own. Would love to see a big Warp in. In the meantime, uh, Protoss army on the move, gonna storm a handful of marines. That is good enough. 
Uh, Alive knows that he had to be really careful that he couldn't really steam up a ramp without Ghost. It would be uh, would be so tough for him. He does have a couple of Ghosts on the map right now, and I believe that Crank saw those Ghosts streaming down the ramp as he tried to run into the main base with a couple of those Zealots. It's all going to come down to the High Templars. Uh, how will they be able to feed back those Ghosts, or are the Ghosts going to land those key EMPs? Because uh, other than Storm, Crank's army is not capable of fighting the army of Alive right now. Uh, Storm whiffs there on those Vikings as Alive continues to look for openings. 195 supply to 173. Economically, Crank sitting on a very nice bank of minerals. Neither player with very much gas. Yes, 13 High Templars, Ben. That should sort of be enough to land a lot of feedbacks and eventually land a lot of storms. It's all going to go down to the storms, though. He really need to land some big storms. Oh, my goodness. High Templar getting sniped off in mass. Every single Templar that was out on the map is, uh, is now gone. A big storm did land on that bio ball. But nothing dying, lots of damage. I love those cannons as well. Makes it so much harder for Ghost to actually go up the ramp. Most of these Ghosts are just going to die right now immediately. But there are still so many High Templars. I think oh. Craig should eventually be able to survive. Oh, reinforcing Storms doing a ton of damage. But a lot of Templar will fall supply-wise. Uh, Alive is pulling way ahead. But Storm continues to rain down. Can't crank hold. Everything is so low. And it looks like, in fact, Alive has too much Army Supply shows us 84 against 29. Oh my god, it doesn't really look like 84 against 29. There were 13 High Templars, but somehow, some way, Alive kept a couple of bio units alive. One oh. more storm will land. Oh, all he, all Crank needs is a couple of cells. Crank has 2,000 minerals. Every storm melts away so many units. And you're right, Kevin. Crank uh, perhaps slipping on the macro just a little bit. 2,000 minerals. That could be 20 charge lots. Well, and that would have been way more than enough to actually clean up this push the first time, way before he would have ever started losing all those probes. He does have that fort base, though, Ben. That fort base at the life, as far as I know, still, still didn't check. Still unscouted. Ah, actually, he did see it. He saw, he saw the cannon, so he doesn't want to bother. I think if Krang just keeps microing uh, or keeps wiping in a lot of zealots, he should be fine. I would love to see feedbacks on the Man effects rather than storms right now. Uh, help ads are reinforcing. That's going to help a lot against these zealots. There is another Colossus out, though, and I think the Viking count has been uh, completely demolished. There are no Vikings. The Vikings all landed and were killed, so this Colossus could be the game changer. A lot of Zealots just dying, kind of dying right there. There are so many Metavacs. He's really going to have to do something about these Metavacs, man. Because on a certain oh. point, it doesn't matter how many Zealots you have. You need to deal with those oh, Metavacs. Oh, the Colossus stays alive. That 2K bank is now down below 1,000. So there's not a lot of money going around here. It all comes down to these last two armies. The Colossus will fall. 130 supply for Alive. 75 remains for Crank. And I feel like that might be the end of the road, Kev. With four or five goals, Alive managed to win a fight against 13 High Templars and Photon Overcharge. That's kind of uh, magnificent. How often do you see that, Ben? It was brute force, man. He just crushed his way up that ramp. And uh, Crank hit some phenomenal storms, Made some, uh, had some really great control. But at the end of the day, the, uh, the raw fighting power of Alive's army was just a little bit too much. More Zealots streaming down this ramp. Gonna try to make a final hold, keep this natural Nexus alive, but it's 35 army supply against 90 of Alive. And uh, even those Metavacs are starting to run low on, uh, low on uh, energy right now, but they've definitely done their job. They've, uh, they've healed those Marauders so many times. They have been working overtime. A single High Templar is gonna barely hang around for a little while longer. Hellbats in the mix. Uh, they're not gonna live for long, but they're gonna do a lot of damage before they do ultimately get hacked to pieces by those Zealots. The, uh, Reinforcement stream from Alive is just constant. GG will get called from Crank Alive with a fantastic and convincing 3-0 victory over Crank. I don't think a lot of people expected that, man. I mean, and we all know how good Alive can be. We saw him back then winning IPL4 in Vegas. He was fantastic that tournament. In Pro League, every now and then you can see sparks of brilliance. And yes, he is training under the wings of Coach Park. But 3-0 against Crank and the way that these games played out as well, other than the game on Eklund Ways, I felt this series was never, uh, this series never was that close. Crank utterly devastated. Just a heartbreaking sight there. New York City skyline behind him. And uh, a sad, a sad little Korean after that after that thumping that Alive game. Alive looked really, really Alive looked really, really good. good. Uh, you can't uh, can't take anything away from, from that young man for that It also point. means that we're going to have an EG semi-final, Ben, between uh, Alive and Revival. Well, it also means that both EG players are going to be going yep. to Korea. So Revival said in his last post-game interview that he's cheering for his teammate, not because he wants to play him, but because he wants to travel with him to the 
Um, I guess yes, season one grand finals. Uh, exactly, the the ultimate culmination of season one, where all three yeah, regions they just, meet. They just want to kill Innovation and Aurora together. Maybe in a two v one. Hey, I mean, anything is possible. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. I think Innovation's too good, but we will see. We will see, indeed. Absolutely phenomenal games there from Alive. I cannot believe it was a three zero. Crank has been yeah. so good throughout this entire tournament. Yeah, Crank hasn't dropped the best of three yet in this tournament, but Alive dropped two of those already, and. Yeah, Alive overall just barely squeezing through of those in those group stages and Crank was just kind of like cruising through getting here in the quarterfinals. Uh, I'm just a little bit sad that we never really saw Crank getting into the situation where yeah. he feels really comfortable. Like if you watch the games against the SEC you could really see that if the game passes a certain point he is really good, but Alive is just like, you know what, I'm never going to let it get there. I, First I game, like those Widomites, yeah. that one Reaper, that's just a smart little move, but it made everything go, going for, uh, go for him so well. And then game number two, the proxy Reapers as well, kind of funny, funky play. And in game number three, it didn't start out all that well for Alive. The proxy factory barely did any damage. It was going really well for Crank. Then a couple of times he just lost a couple of units too carelessly. Also losing Colossus against like Marauders and Marines alone. Normally that can happen once, but it shouldn't happen with three Colossus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Alive really capitalized on that and was just relentless with his question after that because Crank was never really ready to deal with drops. Couldn't agree more, Kev. I know that Axel Toss is with our winner. Let's kick it over and hear what Alive has to say about that impressive victory. Thanks a lot, Ben and Kevin. Great job as always, of course. My name is Axel Toss, and I'm here with our winner of our fourth quarter final, Alive taking out Crank 3-0. My first question is, I, you you expressed doubts to me a little bit um, in our in our round of 16 interview, um, and, and now you just you just go in 3-0 Crank. Um, were you expecting that? 16강에서 인터뷰했을 때 한국 선수가 약간 본인에게 약간 자신이 없다는 식으로 약간 얘기를 해줬었는데 근데 최재원 선수를 상대로 3대 0으로 승리를 했어요. 뭐이 부분에 대해서 어떻게 생각하세요? 뭐그 당시에는 자신이 없었는데 저희 이지 팀에 있는 지금 숙소 생활하는 토스 형들이 많이 도와줬어요. 김학수 선수나 성현덕 선수가 빌드 좋다고 많이 추천해줘가지고 이렇게 자신감 있게 와가지고. 다행히 3대0으로 깔끔하게 이겨지고 굉장히 기분 좋습니다. Yes, I was. Uh, I had a lot of doubt at the round of 16, and I went back to the team house. I did a lot of practice with my teammates, E.G. Oz and also Liquid Hero. Taught me a lot of builds, and they they recommended these builds, and I came back with a lot of huge confidence in me. So I, I think that that's how I pulled the games. That's fantastic. And speaking of which, you know, how valuable do you consider your, your place on Evil Geniuses and the time you've spent at the EGTL house in Korea? 본인에게는 EGTL 숙소에서 생활하는 거랑 그리고 또 EG 팀에서의 본인의 값어치가 얼마나 된다 생각하세요? 뭐 제가 뭐 팀에서 저는 거의 꼴등이에요 실력이 그랜드 마스터 거의 하위권에 머물고 있는데 그래도 형들에게 좀 웃음을 선사하는 그런 선수고 값어치는 아직. 제가 아직 한게 없기 때문에 예전처럼 그렇게 값어치를 올릴 순 없지만 기대는 됩니다. 제 값어치가 저였던. I'm the worst player in the EGTL house, uh, but all I do in a team house is make everyone happy, make a lot of humorous jokes. That's what I do. Uh, right now, I don't have a, I haven't, I haven't earned anything, so I guess I'm not valuable at all. And also, I'm the lowest in a grandmaster in a Korean server, so I guess my value is not worth. Dude, come on, man. You can't keep saying that. You're great. You're really good. You're good. <laughs> um, I mean, first of all, you, you qualified for the finals in Korea, the global finals for this season. Uh, what does that mean to you? And, you know, uh, uh, like looking at the player list, you know, how do you think you're going to fare there? Or, or what's your confidence level going into those matches? The season final, I won't be able to win the season final. But I think that part of it, 어차피 이미 유럽 쪽이나 한국 쪽에는 이미 선수들이 다 리스크가 나왔고 또그 선수들을 상대로 본인이 어느 정도 할수 있을 것 같아요 시즌 파이널에서. 어, 솔직히 말하면 자신은 없어요 지금은. 근데 연습을 많이 해야 된다고 생각하고 있어요. 그 선수들은 다 저처럼 지금 4강 결승까지 간 선수들이고 거의 다 최상위권의 선수들이 지금 자리 잡고 있기 때문에 절대 방심하면 안될것 안될 같고요. 시작할 때부터 마음 단단히 먹고 연습하고 대회에서 정신 제대로 차려야 될것 같아요. 
The players that are in the season final right now are the top, top players from all around the world. And uh, I think I'm not ready for them yet. But what I have to do is I have to be very confident about myself and I have to practice harder so that I can actually play with them. Great, great response. Best of luck. Um, and of course, next up in this tournament, WCS America, you play against your teammate, Revival. What are your thoughts going into that matchup? Um, and yeah, what are your thoughts on that? 이제 내일 김동현 선수랑 같이 이제 팀원인데 경기를 4강을 해야 되는데 그 부분에 대해서는 한희석 선수는 어떻게 생각하세요? 네, 뭐 개인 리그니까 당연히 적이라는 생각으로 게임은 해야 되지만 일단 제가 개인적으로 기쁜 거는 이제 둘다 이지 선수기 때문에 결승을 한명 무조건 올라간다는 거에 일단 만족하고 있고요. 물론 제가 올라가면 더 좋겠지만 김동현 선수가 워낙 숙소에서 잘하고 그리고 태단전을 워낙 자신감 있식 플레이하기 때문에 그렇게 막 이길 수 있겠다 이것까지는 아닌데 그냥 팀원이니까 기분 나쁘게 게임 하지 말고 그냥 저도 이겨도 둘다 웃으면서 게임 했으면 좋겠습니다. Yes, uh, it's, we, well, we already know that one of us will be in the final. That means one of our EG player will be in the final no matter what. So I'm happy for that first. And uh, ZBT is actually Revival's favorite matchup. So I'm a little bit worried, but I'm not unconfident, incompetent or anything. Uh, I'll try my best to, to win and I'll try to have fun with him so that one of us can do really well in the final. Well, team first for a live. Thanks again for talking with me. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. Guys, that was a live Evil Geniuses. He'll be playing in the semifinal tomorrow versus Revival. So make sure you tune into that. Got more StarCraft coming your way. But first, back to the desk. Ben and Kevin, take it away. Thanks a lot, Axel Toss, and congratulations to Alive for uh, a very impressive performance. Um, I think that's actually going to do it for our upper bracket games today. Yep, that's correct, Ben. But we will have some of our consolation matches, some of the very important games that will determine who gets to travel to Korea, who will be uh, seeded into later seasons of the WCS. And a guaranteed $5,000, so they're definitely not playing for just a trip. It's also a lot of money on the line. And of course, they have the chance to go up against uh, the biggest boys in the business. Absolutely, and that's what we all want to see, right? We want to see Moonglade with that koala bear bald eagle tattoo on his back. Yeah, maybe just because he doesn't win WCS America doesn't mean he can't win the gr Grand Final. And if he wins the Grand Final, then oh. I think... Then it's not just going to be over his I back. I want it on his forehead. The, the Ameristrelia tat <laughs> is going to have to come out. That's right, our next match is going to be Moonglade versus Alicia. A little bit of Zerg mm -hmm. versus Protoss, and uh, one that I'm very excited to see. I talked to Moonglade after his first games earlier today, and he was very disappointed because he knew that he was in... Uh, commanding positions in all of his previous maps, but uh, ultimately fell just a little bit short. Um, I hope he bounces back, and I hope we see him a little bit better against Alicia. Uh, I mean, I think he played well. He also played against Crank earlier this tournament. Uh, he lost that series, but he played very well, and kind of the same story. He was so far ahead in one of those games he played on Belgium Vestage, and his EVP looked pretty damn solid, man. So I think he can do it, but of course, uh, defeating Alicia is no easy feat. He's still a very, very strong Korean Pro player. We're going to head into our next break, but more WCS Season 1 finals still to come. Guys, don't go anywhere. StarCraft 2 continues after this.